ladies and gentlemen i am proud to announce that my kingdom alongside our allies and our friends in fire camp have officially won kvk and what might be most exciting to you guys is that our kingdom is recruiting what's going on guys cheers all right i'm gonna be real with you guys here just for a minute i gotta come clean okay the fighting in kingsland ended like two weeks ago and i've been trying to figure out a good time to make this video and originally I had a plan where I was going to make like a montage of a bunch of different fighting clips. And I, honestly, I have like 10 and a half, maybe 11 hours of footage on my computer. And I, there's just no way I just, I can't do it. I can't sit here and go through all that footage. It's just maybe maybe one day when i'm super bored i'll have to i'll have to scrub through it all but i did want to make this video give you guys an update and telling you exactly what happened throughout our kvk how we were able to pull out the victory especially because we were actually testing out the heroic anthem power up season of conquest story right and so we were one of the first people to try out this kvk game mode and luckily we were able to pull out a win and I, and I say luckily but realistically it was just a lot of hard work troops put on the line and coordination with our allies that was basically what got us this win and i think this kvk was some of the most fun that i've had in rise of kingdoms in months and it's because up until kingsland there wasn't really a guarantee as to who was going to win so I'm going to give you guys a breakdown as to how kvk went from my perspective and then I also want to get into later in the video obviously my stats for the kvk so like kills and things like that deaths will go over all that and then finally I'm going to talk about how you guys can play with me in my kingdom because my alliance and my kingdom is recruiting players so at the end of the video make sure you stay till then to find out more information as to what we're looking for for migrators to come in but I just have to say up front don't ask me to join the kingdom okay I I am not responsible for the leadership in this kingdom the only role that i really play in this kingdom is just an open field fighter and i'm a content creator so i guess technically i could be used for like marketing the kingdom but other than that i'm just hanging out with people that i enjoy playing with okay so as you can see here we have kingsland secured right now fire camp is controlling the ziggurat and i want to tell you guys a like a story okay of how this kvk went so we are earth camp we started in the top right corner and our allies were the fire camp up here in the top left corner corner we were going up against wind in the bottom right and water in the bottom left now wind seemed to be the biggest uh hurdle for us to, to come across and for good reason because they had a ton of active players very powerful players are in wind camp and so the first fighting that we had was the pass for opening okay pass for going into san pedro uh this zone was not that important for us but obviously it's always nice to gain control of a zone early on because there's morale buffs and there's also occupation buffs there's honor to be earned from securing a zone so even though this pass for opening wasn't like a big deal it was sort of a big deal okay and we were hoping that if we could crush wind in zone four it would send a message that this was our kvk we're winning but it actually didn't turn out in our favor we went pretty hard in zone four i'm not gonna lie to you guys and honestly there were really good trades at least from my perspective i everyone that was in voice was saying that our trades were really good and everybody sort of felt that way um and we held out about halfway through zone four for i would say maybe one to two days honestly uh and eventually we lost the zone and that wasn't a great way to start uh kvk right wind camp realistically just came in with a ton of numbers and a ton of activity and if i'm being a hundred percent honest the presence of our allies in 49 wasn't really there it didn't seem and then they were there don't get me wrong and i'm not trying to throw shade but like there was just i think th they were getting used to maybe the new arrow towers and the blockade feature and I, i'm not really sure what happened at that point but 49 was very useful in Kingsland. So again, I'm not trying to throw shade and we're going to talk about them a little bit later, but in zone four, it really did feel like we were sort of alone in this zone and it just was too much. We couldn't hold it down. So as much as it would have been nice to have this zone and have an early victory in KBK, it didn't turn out that way, which for a lot of kingdoms is a really big blow to the morale because it's like, oh my God, we got stomped right out of the gate. But one of the things that I love about my kingdom 1568 is that the the leadership here and some of the core fighters in this kingdom 
um are very hardened veterans and a lot of players in this kingdom are like professional right they know what victories matter and what victories don't and everybody here has been playing together for a long time and so we know what we're capable of doing so yes it sucked to lose this zone but pretty much everybody knew like okay that's it's not the end of the world like it's it's gonna be fine sure we found out how strong they actually were but we still have a shot so between then and the next time we had fighting it was a while honestly um because we shared obviously the top of the map with fire camp and uh we didn't really have too much trouble up until past seven right Past seven opening was the next time that we really had a lot of fighting going down obviously we had ruins and things like that some of the ruins were definitely challenging right uh we, we were outnumbered for some of them and it definitely didn't feel very good but uh past seven was the next really big fight that we had now if you guys take a look at the map here this past seven right here was where we had the nine hour rally defense okay if you guys missed that somehow on my channel you have to check out that video it might actually have been the longest past defense defense rally in the entire game so go ahead and check that out on the channel but basically the strategy here for past seven was obviously if we could take past seven and push into the zone that would be very beneficial to us once we did that though right we did actually push into the zone a little bit eventually wind camp was active and they pushed us back through the pass now at that time i was at work and by the time i got home from work i got a message on discord saying that we had taken past seven back which was a big deal why was this a big deal well realistically we just had to hold this zone until pass eight opens because that's when we could have access to king's land so as you can see here we have a low fort placed right in front of the uh, pass eight here and we have a bunch of different uh forts uh, planted right in front of pass seven so effectively all we had to do uh was fill out this zone and we at the time had way more flags over here basically just filling this entire zone up with flags so that way we could hold this zone as long as possible so even if we lost past seven it would take so long for the enemy to burn through these forts and all the flags that we had stacked here that pass eight would have already opened and we would have already pushed through into king's land and we were able to actually pull it off and this was one of the things that i talked about in my video where i showed the nine hour rally some people commented on that video they didn't really understand they're like wait a minute omniarch you said you held it for nine hours and you and then right after that you guys lost the pass like doesn't that feel really bad like how can like why are you celebrating this and that's what people they obviously didn't realize that it takes so long to burn these forts uh that we had already held the zone long enough to guarantee safe access into king's land so like sure it would have been great to hold the pass but the fighting there was pretty much over anyway right we had enough time to go into king's land as hard as we needed to go and that was pretty much it so the fact that we lost past seven after however many hours it was of fighting wasn't really a big deal and honestly that nine hour rally took a toll on everybody involved i think even if you talk to some of the big players in the win camp like they basically used all their cavalry there okay and you know luckily for us we had a mixed garrison so we could put a ton of different stuff in there but going into king's land uh we definitely felt uh, a bit drained okay a lot of people lost a ton of power in that zone seven uh that past seven defense and so going into king's land we didn't really know what to expect right we thought if wind camp was going to come in and smash as hard as they did for past seven we might have a really tough time in king's land but uh king's land fighting only lasted like 12 hours maybe 14 hours if i'm being generous i honestly don't know but i remember king's land opening it went really well for us and i was honestly i was a little bit surprised because i was worried after how strong we saw wind camp come and, and attack us at past seven we saw how powerful they were at past four and they beat us at past four uh and so i i was i was surprised that we were able to secure king's land after such a short amount of time so realistically what happened here the way that we that we went about king's land um was that we obviously pushed through these two passes here on un, uninterrupted because even though we lost past seven we were good um our allies here in 49 which i mentioned before pushed through king's land here and some of fire camp pushed down through king's land in this area but the biggest fighting was happening over in this area because wind camp pushed through these two passes and they immediately built their flags directly to the zig right they they were super fast they got to the zig really quickly uh but we were all in a discord call and we were like wait a minute like why are they building so quickly to the zig when king's land just opened like all the fighting was happening in here and our strategy was to just push 
we literally were just going to make a line running along the the mountains here and just cut all their flags at the passes and and that was going to be it so they push very far into king's land but but when the flags get cut they go inactive anyway so that was a little bit confusing for us but what ended up happening was our um our kingdom right and fire camp basically had two v1 over here right it was us two versus wind and 49 and some in fire uh, we're able to push water back through these passes right so we didn't even have to focus on these passes because um the group from fire and uh 49 were able to do their job over on this side which let us basically focus all of our power on wind and i what i would assume to be a majority of fire's power over here on wind as well so wind sort of had a 2v1 over here uh and water was just busy they just could not uh they couldn't step away to to help them basically and and honestly there was a point where like we pushed up until the middle and there was a stalemate for maybe a like I don't know two hours and then after that it was pretty much it like we pushed through uh, and we were just constantly winning trades constantly taking very key flags and cutting them off from pushing even farther into King's land. And by the time I woke up, I think I slept like maybe six hours. Um, when I woke up, I had found out that there was already a ceasefire in place. Like I was confused. I was expecting to wake up and find just like we did with past seven, the fighting still going. Um, but, but that wasn't the case. So we took control of the Zig at first, uh, and then we held it to the end of the chapter. And then we gave Zig over to the, uh, the fire camp. And so that way they could hold it till the very end of of the event but again this kvk was some of the most fun i've had because there was no guaranteed victory at any point and there were certainly instances during kvk where i thought okay if we don't have numbers show up now we are not going to win and then to actually pull out the victory felt uh felt really good it was just a legitimately good fight at least from my perspective now of course if you go into lost uh, lost kingdom chat or if you ask somebody from fire camp how it went or if you ask somebody from wind camp how it went They'll probably tell you a different story but that's how it seemed to play out for me now let's take a look at my stats here for this kvk um if you guys remember or if you've been paying attention to my stats i went into kvk with literally 600 million kill points right it was like six zero zero so i don't know what the the rest of it was but it's basically 600 million so i got 243 million kill points uh in this kvk alone my honor is relatively pathetic honestly i don't like to grind barbs and i definitely forgot to put some armies in the in the ruins and, and those in those events so you know shame on me if we take a look at the kills here it looks like i got 13 million four hundred and forty three thousand uh either kills or sev wounds throughout this uh, this kvk and honestly i didn't do any kill trading for like mightiest governor or anything like that this was literally just it is what it is honestly i uh, i mean you can tell that i really don't pay attention to fighting statistics i mean the number of comments who are like oh my god you don't even have a billion kill points that's crazy like i, I don't know it doesn't matter to me it's a mobile game like i'm just chilling man i have fun playing and i play when i can play and that's pretty much it i literally have more t5 kills than i have t4 kills that's actually really funny if we go into the hall of heroes i have one 1,855,000 dead troops and a vast majority of them are tier five pretty much all of them are tier five besides like maybe what 150,000 tier four the rest are tier five so 1.7 million tier fives it looks like yeah that's a that's a lot of infantry I don't know if you guys could tell but I'm an infantry player <laughs> I had a lot of infantry in that uh in that Zenobia the the past seven the nine hour past seven defense um I was constantly putting three armies in that pretty much the whole time so yeah that's kind of what happened there so I'm gonna get uh, about a million troops back which is really nice but definitely is gonna be uh that, that's that's gonna hurt it's gonna hurt when I when I lose half a million tier five infantry Oof okay with all that out of the way guys my kingdom is recruiting okay we are five time season of conquest winners and we're looking for like 15 to 20 really active and powerful players to join the kingdom so if you guys want to play with me this is where you need to pay attention okay focus up so first let's go over what are we looking for as a kingdom and then we're going to talk about what the kingdom will provide you you have to be at least 45 million power that is that is i mean come on your kill points have to be equal to your 
power times 10. So for me, for example, my power is 79 million, which means I need to have at least 790 million kill points, which I, I have a little bit more than that, which is good. If you're a hundred million power player, they expect a billion kill points and you can do the math. We also expect that your dead troop count is your power divided by 10. So if you're a 50 million power player, we expect to see at least 5 million dead troops. That tells us that you're willing to put some troops into flags, into garrisons, into passes, into rallies, and you're willing to lose them. Like I said, we're looking for about 15 to 20 really active high power players who are not afraid to fill their hospital or get dead troops. So if you meet the requirements that we just discussed here, feel free to reach out to Miss Mayhem here, TL Mayhem, or you can reach out to Ta as well. These two players are pretty much always in the leadership roles here in the uh, in the Tilla Alliance. Okay. If you can't find us, it's 15, 6, 68 TL 68 reach out to either mayhem or ta we're not really looking for a big group of 15 people we're looking for individual powerful players maybe up to a group of like three right if you and a couple friends are, are joining and you're all active and engaged then sure that's fine but big like alliance mergers we're not looking for that okay so some of the kingdom rules so that way you know what to expect and if you want to join us or not again five times season of conquest winners we won the well this is the power up game mode so obviously we were the first people to test out this game mode and we pulled out a victory we also won March of the ages when that was being tested out so it shows that even though these are new game modes our leadership is able to adapt and understand those game modes very quickly and still pull out victories for the kingdom which has been really cool even though March of the ages was garbage we are a one alliance kingdom more or less and there is no council okay we have leadership in our alliance and they basically control the entire kingdom this just prevents there from being too much unnecessary drama and it's something that the kingdom is looking to keep so if you want to migrate in your alliance it's not gonna happen we're a mid a seed kingdom uh we would like to be a b seed kingdom but realistically once our power drop is finished we'll probably be low a seed the kingdom does pay attention to the top 300 by power to ensure that we are properly ranked in our seed so if you are too bloated and you're not contributing we will either request that you migrate or we will zero you after repeated asking and they also moderate the number of t5 seed so the leadership in kingdom does actually go through and scout people to make sure that we don't have too much t5 siege because that's just wasted power pretty much mightiest governor is arranged based on kvk performance okay so the top 10 to 15 ranks in mightiest governor during the off season are arranged meaning you can't just compete in whatever mightiest governor you want to you will get burned it doesn't matter how much power you have it doesn't matter who you are specifically if you didn't contribute in the last kvk or virtually ever um you will not win mightiest governors during the off season during kvk however it's free range you can obviously train as many troops as you want you can kill as many enemies as you want that doesn't matter it's open uh, mightiest governor during kvk the 20 legendary sculpture events are all open as well so you know feel free to do that those aren't ranked all the keeps and camps those are not regulated you can kill those and do whatever you want with those as well we have multiple arc of osiris alliances for different time zones so you know we again this this one alliance kingdom does cover pretty much all time zones uh, that you could be interested in and we already have a dedicated osiris league team i'm pretty sure that is pretty set in stone but if you guys are like super insanely powerful in the game i don't know you can ask about that i'm not familiar we do have our own discord we're very active on discord and we do often and jump into voice calls uh usually for big moments in kvk we probably have like 20 or so people in voice maybe more sometimes a little bit less of course voice calls for arc of osiris there is arc of osiris practices as well uh and the kingdom does do very extensive stat tracking for example these are the stats for our current kvk so we keep track of t4 and t5 kills number of deads that players are gaining number of kvk points they basically have a, a formula that they use for that as you can see here we crushed our kill and dead goals by like an insane amount this was a bloody kvk oh looks like i ranked 53 here look at that sick they also keep track of resource assistance um basically kill to death ratio number of deads that were gained here so there is a little hall of fame here which is nice to give some extra recognition to some of those key players so if you guys want to join me in kingdom 1568 and you meet the requirements that we talked about before and you're interested in playing with me in kvk in the future make sure you reach out to miss mayhem or ta in tl68 in my alliance and i look forward to playing with some of you guys now as far as kvk fighting footage 
I'm thinking in the future, maybe I'll just live stream KBK. I know you guys have been wanting that. I just feel like that gives too much information away. And honestly, KBK performance is uh, more important than you know, like a random live stream on my YouTube channel. Let me know in the comment section below if that's something that you want. Also drop a thumbs up while you're down there. It really helps out the channel a ton. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here and click the bell to be notified the next time I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Peace.